everyone. Welcome to what is our 50th episode of Lackawanna Pastimes. I'm Sarah Pacini, the Assistant Director at the Lackawanna Historical Society. Today, as we come up on Memorial Day, we're joined by our friend Dale Kecklock. Uh, he'll be featuring information from his website, historical-data.com. Uh, it has information on more than 500 local, local cemeteries. Uh, Dale has traveled into private cemeteries and public cemeteries uh, to take photos of headstones and has also recorded some family photos and wills and other information about the people buried in those in those cemeteries. We hope it's a really great re resource for genealogists. Uh, Dale has been working on this project since 1997, and as I said, has recorded more than 500 cemeteries in Lackawanna, Lackawanna County and the surrounding areas. Um, please, if you if anyone has any other information about other small cemeteries that may be around, please let us know, um, and we'll pass them along to be included as well. Um, I'll turn the program over now to Dale, um, who'll be sharing information from his website. I uh, started doing research, like she said, 1997. And I started with a family tree program. And around 2005, well, I used to work for Lowe's and I was uh, passing by a lot of cemeteries. And I thought these may help out a lot of people with the research. So I started taking pictures of them. I started with the Brown Family Cemetery up in Scott Township. And I, right now I have 561 cemeteries. I've done over 61,000 tombstones. And I guess you could probably see this on the screen. Here's the home page. There's a lot of, the, we have a lot of videos on it. Today we're just talking about the cemeteries and we're gonna stick with uh, Lackawanna County. So what you would do, you go to the site here, click on cemeteries, United States. Now the site is going to be redone. My two sons are both engineers. One with Google, another with another company down by Philly. We set it up so that people could add their own data, like old pictures, whatever, or to the cemetery tombstones. But uh, they have to rewrite the code and do that and go through legal stuff you have to do. Okay, now we're going into Lackawanna County. They're all alphabetical order. And I'm going to go through some of them. And Let's make it interactive. If you guys got questions along the way, just ask, because I'm not as polished a speaker as Sarah is. I mean, she's really a good speaker. I'm just, uh, you know, I'll muddle my way through. But this is the first page of Lackawanna County. You see it starts with Andrews Capwell, Archibald Cemetery. I am from Archibald. And uh, a lot of them, uh, well, let's start with this one here. This, this is an unusual one, the Briggs Family Cemetery. This here is down on North Dewey Avenue in Jackson Street, Scranton. It's under a baseball diamond. And today, what it looks like is that there's actually people buried underneath there. And one of the uh, letters that I got right here, it mentions there underneath the ground. Oh, hold on, let me back up here. Right here, it's on, on the Kaiser, but it was covered over as a baseball field in, in 1901. But that is a cemetery. The Briggs family, I think they said they moved out around the time of the, uh, right before the Civil War, but there was a cemetery there. If you wonder where I get these, well, I belong to about 12 or 13 historical societies, including this uh, society down here. And I have a lot of uh, pin dot type 10 maps. They give you every cemetery in the county, every dirt road, every pond. And I go around, I'll look at them at home uh, with the Google uh, maps. And if they're small enough, I'll put the GPS coordinates there and I'll take off on a Saturday morning and I'll start uh, doing them. But let's see, I'm gonna go to one in our town here, Archibald Cemetery. You see, I have 31 pages there. I have records that this guy, Conrad Bachman, he was a, uh, uh, a private in the Civil War. I have a lot of Civil War records that I got because I do belong to the Civil War camp down here. And I probably have four or 500 Civil War veterans and their records on in different various cemeteries. This guy has an unusual story. Now, I don't know if you could read this or not. Uh, a pathetic occurrence of half a century ago directly caused by the Civil War, a former Archibald family. The Bachmans, the principals came to a climax. Here's what happened. When Lincoln called for the volunteers and during the Civil War times, Conrad Bachman was one of the many who shouldered the gun and he went to the front. But word came back he had fallen on a Southern battlefield. The shock of this sad news is more than Mrs. Bachman could stand and her mind gave way. She was placed in an asylum and her children scattered. Bachman, the supposed dead soldier, came home. His family was not there. He bore it bravely and then went away and he was no more heard from. And uh, then they, the daughters went looking for their mom. They finally found her up there in the Blakely Poor Farm. But it said, the uh, former will never know the blessing of the union. Her intellectual faculties are impaired. She spent 45 years of her life in asylums. That's some of the stuff I put on there. I put on records, I put on stories and a lot of obits from the newspaper. But the stones, they're photographed pretty good there. If uh, you, know, you need copies of them there, I could always send, and I have people on the contact page ask me all the time if they could, uh, I could send a copy, which I do. 
Now, let's see, the Brown Cemetery was the one that I first mentioned there. I, the first one I started on, and it was five stones back in 2005. Uh, there's a girl named Patty Dennis. She takes care of that, and about five or six other cemeteries up there, she called me. She's president of the Scott Historic Society, and she said, I cleaned this cemetery, and I found 30 some 35 more stones. So I went up there, and I got pictures of all these other old stones, and they date from here. 1891, he died. There's someone who died in the 1700s, but that's up there on Route 247. If you click on the uh, coordinates, it'll show you right there where it's at. We do have GPS coordinates for about 99% of them. Uh, the ones that don't have was the days before I had a GPS. Right now, I GPS them all. Uh, let's see, the Browning plot. There's one right here. If you're familiar with uh, Roba's uh, tree farm up there where they have the, uh, the maze, this was laying up against a tree. Hannah, wife of Welcome A. Browning, and uh, died in, it looks like, 1876. And a guy was mowing his lawn there, and I stopped him, and, and I said, is there somebody buried here? He said, yeah. He said, that stone was there since we bought the house. So that's one of the ones I'm trying to go to uh, give you. And you guys, again, you got questions, you know, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, this one here was one of the hardest I ever went to. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Adolphus Hohensi. He had lectures and stuff on natural food and, and supplements back in the 60s. And he had a big old Cadillac that had horns on the front of it, bull horns there. My father remembered him. He's buried in there. And uh, that one there, it took, whoa, it was a very a gargantuan effort to try and find it. There's Chester Kowalski, who was a member down here. He passed away since then. And somebody was taking care of it back then, but it's a very, very difficult cemetery to get to. The easiest way is as you're going up 107, right where it meets 81, you walk up the entrance right up to 81, right where 81 joins the highway, turn right, crawl up, you gotta go over a deer fence and go about hundred yards and that's where the cemetery is. Uh, Can I ask another question? And yeah, I, I please, realized I, I was on mute. And this goes back to the first one you mentioned, where they put a, built a baseball field over the cemetery. Now, my question is, evidently, it's legal to do a, a, a football field or anything, a baseball field over covering well, a cemetery? Do they have to remove the bodies or... I don't think they did. According to this letter, I got somebody forward with this to me, and it said right here, uh, it said it was near Kaiser Avenue, but by 1901, it was covered over as a baseball field. And I'm not sure where I got this email from, but uh, it was uh, it was sent to me there. But okay. they got this from the Albright Memorial Library in a paper, newspaper copy dated 1916. And it was an article about the old Briggs Private Cemetery. It does not exist today. There's only two graves in it. One of John Briggs and Susanna Briggs, uh, wife of Abner Briggs, this person's great, 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 great grandparents. And uh, they posted it on the, uh, but it was uh, covered over as a baseball field. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, I know where the baseball field is. And um, also parallel to Kaiser Avenue is Cameron Avenue. And my uncle lived on Cameron Avenue. And he always said that there were some bodies along the hill buried there, you know, that. I don't, well, I mean, it must have been just buried uh, uh, be, when they could do it on their land before they put the road in. But I know where the baseball field is. That's amazing. That's okay, nice. thank you. You answered my questions. Oh, I was wondering how legal all this was. In I think, as, like I said, I'm not as polished a speaker as Sarah, <laughs> and, and, but I could uh, answer any kind of questions. Okay. There's several carpenter uh, cemeteries. There was two of them that I found. These here I didn't find from uh, maps because PennDOT would not know about these. They're not next to the road. I had to cross this field, which was several acres, and it was up in the woods. But back in 07, I was out in Manhattan. We used to go out there. It's a little dangerous now. And I got a call from a guy named Howard Otto. And he said, I see, uh, I understand you do cemeteries. He said, I have about a dozen of them up in the Scott area, the Benton area. Well, I came back later that week, and he gave me a two-hour tour. And I made a middle note of where everyone was. This was one. And uh, I mean, very, very old. It's in the woods. It's a long walk to get there. Penda did not know about it, uh, but it was a carpenter family. In fact, there's a reverend right there, 1808 to 1890. And you see all the weeds around it. I mean, nobody takes care of it. 
uh, and, and all the rest of them that he uh, showed me in that area, they're just so neglected that, that nobody goes to them. I mean, they're just, uh, they're there and uh, there's probably a very few uh, relatives of those people around. This one here, as you see, it's near uh, Marshbrook Road. There's a big pond and I had to walk that couple hundred yards across there. And uh, yes, I've been bitten by ticks. I do have Lyme disease and uh, they're, they're out there. When we go to a cemetery that has a lot of uh, weeds, I usually tick up. I put on the long pants, put the tick spray on, put the tape on and all that. Uh, this one, I think I, I might've had shorts on there. But uh, there is a, a lot of, let's see, a Costco plot. There's some that had, this only had one stone. This is on Crystal Lake Road in Fell Township. And it's fairly new, 2017 and 2010. But I was driving by one day uh, when I was still working and I saw that. So I jumped off fast. I always carry a camera and my phone. So I have two cameras with me. And I uh, filmed that one there. And uh, Costco, I don't know. Uh, again, here's the uh, where it's at. Crystal Lake Road is right off, maybe uh, 50 yards off the road and uh, easy to see as you're driving by. Uh, let's see, the Cosner Cemetery, that's a uh, up in Clark Summit. I have wills on there. Here's a will of, uh, now with my computer, I can make it bigger there, but the, uh, the David Cosner, 1899. I do have a lot of wills in my computer. I downloaded over a thousand. And when I find out where they're buried, I look through them. They're not in alphabetical order. Uh, I, uh, I'll put them on the websites there, but you can see all these pages there. This is all from uh, David Cosner, 1899. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any Civil War veterans in there, but uh, some of the stones are old. There's 1854, and we died at 55 years old, Abram Williams. That is up in Clark Summit. That's easy to get to. <clears throat> One of the ones that Patty Dennis takes care of is the Cook Taylor Cemetery. That's uh, another big one there. There's a lot of history in there. People from Scott, there's a lot of newer stones too though. And uh, a lot of oh, that guy, I guess he uh, liked to play uh, the guitar. <laughs> All kinds of stones. I've seen a uh, picture, I seen one, it's not in Lackawanna County though. It had the weight of the baby. You don't see that often, the weight of a baby, how much it weighed then. It died as a baby and it had that on there. But uh, this is an overview there and that, well, the girl takes care of it herself. But I'll walk around. I get my exercise that way. And uh, right now, I was telling Sarah I'm doing Bradford County. And uh, there's no cell phone service in most of that county there. You're riding on dirt roads. Some of them are better than the main roads here. And I find them on the, the uh, Type 10 maps. If they're not too big for the Google map, then I'll go up there and I'll do it. The real big ones, we're going to wait until our site is set up for uh, other people to uh, add then they could take pictures just like find a grave and they could add the forest there. Uh, there's a couple of them with one person there. Now this is the uh, Episcopal Church in German. The uh, pastor, Francis H. Stricker, 1892. He's buried right there in the, the churchyard. And uh, there's one up at Carbon. This is the overview of the church right there. It's on Main Street, right across the street where it used to be Kennedy Beverage. And he's buried right there in the front yard there. Uh, let's see, uh, the Fisk Cemetery, that is also up by Robins Tree Farm. I only have uh, one page of that. that was in the woods and nobody's taking care of that. I think I picked up a couple of ticks that day. It's all weeds and ferns and I had to push them aside just to get the pictures. So that, but the history of these and the, the uh, genealogist, I mean, in 05, I start taking pictures. I mean, I think it was 09, I did a program for the Genealogy Research Center uh, up in, uh, which is now the funk in Peckville. And Dr. Powell was there from Carbondale. And he said, you know, this may help genealogists if you want to put it online. So my son was doing that in school and he said, yeah, I could do that. So we built the site, I think around the end of 09 and it's been on online ever since. But back then we only had 29 cemeteries. We have 561. Now that's page one. And oh, by the way, let's see, the Elmdale Cemetery is one that I bought. I went to the meeting up there and somebody had taken these pictures and that's, I, I bought them. I had to put the names on them, like Chapman, comma, Floyd A, comma, Mini H, you know, I put them in alphabetical order. Uh, out of the 561, I think uh, three of them were done by other people. Homer Butler did two of them. And this one here I bought. So and I can't say I photographed them all, but most of them. Uh, let's see, before I leave this page, the Finch Cemetery. You guys familiar with uh, Finch Hill? 
as you're, you live up there? It's by my house. Really? As <laughs> yeah. you're going up, off to the left. Now you can see it because they're developing that land. But I did work up there and a guy was telling about the cemetery. I was installing an appliance for Lowe's and he said, when you're done. We went down and you had to go through a patch like this and it was all in that woods there. This cemetery here actually has Revolutionary War veterans in it. And this is a picture I got of one guy there. He was in the Civil War, but I'm finding pictures, wherever I can find pictures of these people, I, I put them online. And I have to uh, laugh. I was doing a program for Joe Breyer and I mentioned that. I said, whenever I could dig them up, I, I put them online. And a woman raised her hand. She said, dig them up. Are you digging up the people? I said, no, I'm in digging up the pictures. <laughs> But it's nice to have pictures of them there. That's uh, Isaac Finch. Here's his stone right there. And he did fight in the Civil War. There's a lot of uh, ferns there and stuff. And that one's not very well taken care of. Here's uh, an overview of it. The tree, tall trees in there. But the uh, someone did cut the bush down there. But right now, they're going to build it all around it. And they cut all those trees down in it. And it looks like somebody might start taking care of it. But uh, here are the coordinates for that. It's right on 247. Here's uh, the uh, top of the road there, and it's off to your left there as you're going up. Now, let's see, that's page one. There's a lot that I'm not even, uh, oh, uh, this one here, I have to tell you about this. I, uh, I have another will on here. I looked and looked and looked for this one here. It's up by Sickler's Pond. And uh, by the way, Sickler's Pond is where there was a, a murder a victim thrown in there. And uh, I know a, a an old chief of police, he said years ago, he drove by him and his daughter and they thought they saw a big turtle in there and it was a body. But across the street in the woods, about uh, 30 or 40 yards is the cemetery. And as you can see, it's uh, all grown in. You can't see it off the road. A guy named Woody White, who's in his uh, 90s, I called him and he came down and walked me in the woods and showed me it. But I looked and looked and I, I just couldn't find it. He said, it's across the street from that pond. And as you can see, uh, it's not, uh, there's ticks in there. Not taken care of at all, but that is uh, called the uh, Cyril Carpenter Cemetery. And here is the, uh, the coordinates right there. Here's where they found that uh, murder victim in that pond. But this is in the woods quite a ways, and you cannot see it from the road. It's on uh, Sickler Pond Road. But I have a uh, carpenter. His will is on there, and that was in 1885, one of the... Uh, thousands of wills, like I said, I have on the, uh, the computer. And right here, I have a, a register where they're uh, talking about that. I found that, uh, that came from Clara Gardner. She was the president of the Greenfield uh, Historical Society, which I'm a member of. And uh, I found cemeteries for them up there too. And they wanted me to do tours uh, whenever they want. I'll take them out there because there's, there's a lot up in their area there. Uh, let's see. One of the ones I did recently was Forest Home Cemetery, and I found out I have a lot of relatives down there. That is on East Adderton Street in Taylor. It's down in the hole, and you cannot see it from the road, but here I have 28 pages of uh, people on there, and uh, you guys have any questions, if anything, or I <laughs> Dale, the cemeteries yes. that have their names, like the Cyril Carpenter Cemetery. Yes. Are, are you assigning the name to the cemetery no. or how, how do they, how, how I, are they named when I they're got, the small cemeteries I, like that? I got that name from Clara Gardner. She said okay. that's what it's called. Cyril Carpenter was, what it got, was one of the, uh, the Carpenters that was buried in there. Probably one of the first ones or maybe he was okay. a Civil War veteran. But uh, that's how they, yeah, because I, I just called it the uh, Sickler Pond Cemetery and she mm. said, no, it's wrong. She said okay. it's Cyril Carpenter. Uh, it was her, one of the people up there that told me that. And uh, this one, now Franklin Cemetery, uh, this one here, I forget who gave me directions to this. It was another one. It was tough to find. It was uh, way out there in that field. There. This might have been the Howard Otto. And he told me about that one there. Again, I have wills on here. I have the will of uh, Leonard Carpenter, 1886. Alman Carpenter, 1903. And not taken care of well. I mean, they're just, uh, look at the, the tree branches uh, in, in front of the stones. I pull them away where I can, if I can, to get the picture. If not, I, uh, I just can't do it, but I'll always take pictures of them. And uh, now this one here, the Gritman Cemetery, that's on Hohensi Road, it's up near that other one where Chester Kowalski was seen. Uh, there is a family up here who does take care of this. I do have a lot of work on there. And uh, here they are cutting the grass there. 
the family, the, uh, uh, the Gritman family lives away, New Jersey, I think, and they send the money every year to help take care of it. There are some stones there made out of zinc and they're falling Ooh. apart. And a lot of them are, you can't read and everything, but I'm glad I got them because uh, it's going to be a matter of only a few years or decades. You're not going to be able to read them at all. I mean, they're wearing out a lot. Yeah, here, uh, here's a zinc one that somebody kicked in. Wow. The plates, all it says is Smith. And uh, they're got, they weren't inside. They kicked them out and took them away. I don't know where they're at. But uh, you, we don't know the first names on that. But oh, it's just oh, okay. Smith. Hey, I have a quick question. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, all these abandoned cemeteries uh, um, or overgrown, uh, are they primarily family? Or were there settlements at one time that, that all moved away? Or I think they were family. They were just family cemeteries. And uh, because back then you could do, well, you could still do it now. And there's one up there and it behooves me what the name of it is. I, I, I should have uh, wrote that down last week. Uh, but one of the uh, supervisors in Greenfield Township has one on his land. And he took yes, me to it. That's right. So that, and he took me up there and I said, sir, I said, this is a modern cemetery. Your wife is there and your son. How do you get one nowadays? He said, well, you have to go to the state. You deed it out of your property. You, you go to the county. Then you go to your township. It deeded out. He said, we have to allow people to go in there, uh, even if we sell the land. And uh, but he has a modern one right on his property. You have to have so many acres, I think. You can't do it in a small plot like in, in Archibald where I live. But he does have it up there. You're right. That's that's modern like there. Uh, let's see. I did uh, let, this one here. This is interesting. It's at 107 in Scott Township. And let me show you the coordinates. This is up. If you're coming up 107 Heart Lake Road, before you get to that church here, if you see the cursor, it's right on the left. And I knocked on doors there because I found out about this, not from the type 10 maps, but from the, uh, some of the society up there. And uh, Arminda Gibbon used to live there. And I knocked on, she may be still there. She said, yeah, it's right in the woods. There's only one stone. So I went in and it says Joseph on it. It's very hard to read. And I came back. I said, well, what's the, the last name? She said, Graves. I said, was there any more stones? She said, yeah, that house over there took them for sidewalk stones. Oh, oh. Yep. And I did not knock on the door and, and ask, but uh, here is, uh, it's in these woods here. You walk in this woman's trailer is to the left here and you walk in and you go down past that uh, gas tank. It's in the woods. Uh, Patty uh, Dennis wants to clean that one up. I said, we'll take it there, but here's what it looks like. I mean, that stone is standing in the middle here and nobody's been in there for decades. And it was the Graves family. I do have the will, and it tells about how Albert Graves, 1901, was buried in the family uh, a grave site there. Uh, let's see. Uh, another one that's a very off the grid there at the Griddletown Cemetery. I found out about this uh, through hearsay, and it's down in Old Forge. And they did have a scout group go in there, which is great. Oh, and you ever get neat. scouts to take it, they put a fence around it. And the only thing, legible on the stone was the guy who made it right here, J.F. Perkins, uh, Oneana, New York. He was a stone maker, but whoever, uh, the name is gone, it's long gone, but the stone maker is there. And uh, there's an overview, stones like that. I mean, you just can't, uh, and they have markers there, crosses where the graves were, but there's no names. We have no idea who's in there. A developer bought all that land when he found out there's a cemetery there, the option was, dig them up and move them or uh, you can't build there. And he said, no. Nope. So he turned that land over to the, uh, I guess the borough there, but you're looking at the coordinates. Here's where the, uh, where it is. It's wow. uh, here's Connell street foundry. It's in the woods. You got to do some walking in the woods and there's a Pagnati softball fields right down. There. I think I walked down Milwaukee Avenue and uh, here's Drake's lane. And I walked through the woods that way now, or Villa drive actually. And I came into it that way, but that was a, a tough one. It was, that I heard about, just hearsay. Uh, let's see what I'm trying to find. Interesting ones. You guys probably, if you go through Scranton and all, the Hearman's Family Cemetery, that's right on the uh, on Main Street. And the stones are all lined up like that, but they were not, there was somebody there cleaning up. They're not that way originally. Uh, they were all scattered all over, laying down and uh, some scout group got in there, cleaned up. They stood them all in a row and they, do, they still do take care of it. It's taken care of very well. There was one here though, uh, it said, in memory of Fandena, wife of Henry Hermans, who died October 30, 1831. And it looked like 
you guys see good age 10 years and i thought this can't be 10 years <laughs> 10. and somebody was there cleaning it and they looked they said no that was a 40 that it, it wore out but you look at that you even put uh soap on or you, you put the uh, shaving cream with i don't do but people it, it'll still look like a tent and the guy said no no he said years ago we could see that we could read it and it's 40 years but i'm looking at that 10 years that it can't be but uh that's right on main avenue there well, actually <laughs> when i attended penn state years ago and i just took a walk west of town and two roads divided and i noticed a cemetery i guess it was a family cemetery inside and the most prominent gravestone was a 10 year old really yeah oh, oh yeah that uh, 1800s i suspect the mortality rate was pretty high it was yeah it definitely was now some of the bigger ones i've done uh let's see the uh Okay, well, yeah, this is the, well, let me get to this one first. This Hubbard Cemetery, this is the one that uh, I took, me and John Zadura took Patty Dinner. She wanted to see it. She's the girl who cleans up cemeteries up there. This one was a walk and a half. You walk down this road. Somebody did, did cut it. You walk down. It's about a you know, three-eighths of a mile. All the way down, then you turn right, and the cemetery's down there in the woods. I said, Patty, do not come down here alone. Well, the next day she came back, she texted me. She said, I cleaned it up. I said, you went up there? No, no. She said, my son-in-law and daughter came in. They have sedentary jobs. I put them to work <laughs> and she cleaned yeah. it up. But this one here, somebody did over the years, glue the stones back together. Uh, that was uh, AXA, AXA Hubbard and uh, it, it was broken. There's glue put on there. Uh, here's Elizabeth Hubbard, George Hubbard. Uh, he died 1897, age 59 years. And I guess they own a farm up there. Uh, there's articles in here. Uh, that this one, actually, George Hubbard uh, committed suicide right here, 1873. Oh, wow. We found the, uh, the article there. So that's, that's on the website. I, any kind of article I find, uh, and it tells right here, this, uh, yeah, right here, George Hubbard. It tells what happened. No reason can be assigned. Uh, they found him uh, hanging, I guess, suspended from the neck. It says right here, very graphic in the paper, if you guys do research at all. They write things in the paper that they never write today. I mean, suspended by the neck by the handle of the barn. I mean, they never write that, <laughs> that way now. Yeah. <laughs> right here, no reason can be assigned for the destruction of life as young Hubbard was in the most comfortable sort of about 36 years old, surrounded by every good. I mean, it's right in the paper that way. So I, I put that in there. And uh, but that one is a tough one to uh here. Uh, here's a, a picture of there. Look at the ferns. Patty and her daughter and son-in-law cleaned that all down there. And uh, we didn't run into any snakes on that one, though. But I told her, I said, you're so far off the beaten path. Don't go in there alone. And uh, now we have, I got a listing from the Scott Historical Society, these people who are in there. And here we have a, a soldier of the revolution, Westcott Stone, 1760, died 1838. And... Uh, I think that was the one of the few soldiers there, but there, there are, there's a lot of Rev soldiers around. More There's more uh, Civil War than Rev. And different names, like, I don't know if you guys know anyone named Eudora, first name, <laughs> Eudora Squire. That's her name was, they're, they're old names. I mean, she died, uh, it's hard to read when, she was 18, in 1867, but she was up there in years, probably born in the 1700s, and that was a common name there. But uh, let's see, that one there uh there's one in downtown troop the logan memorial cemetery four pages of that and there was a church there that burned down and it's on center street and troop my wife was working down there and uh taking care of someone she said you know there's a cemetery down there that you don't have <laughs> and i went down and i got it i think uh, a couple of days after she told me about it right down off of center street but that was fairly new there the stones are they're pretty easy to read and uh but uh, look at the, the names. I mean, the way they're spelled. And let's see. You guys have any questions of anything yet? Uh, I'm curious to know how you get someone to come in and clean up a, an old cemetery. I had a lot of people ask me that. And uh, <laughs> the people that live near this one asked me that, I think, too. This one here, uh, they have horses that run in there. And here's a, a view of it looking from the road. It's inside here, and we had a crawl underneath the electric fence. I said that probably the best way, if you know a scout master in your area, and they want to do a, a project like that for a badge, they could do it. Uh, someone asked me, can you get it on a historical list? You probably could. Does that guarantee to be taken care of? No, I don't think so. 
I think the best bet is like that one in Old Forge where the, uh, the scout group went in. Uh, I think it was one scout, one or two scouts, not a whole group. And he did that uh, single-handedly. But, but they clean it up and then, but the, it's not an ongoing thing if a scout group goes in. That's the problem. Okay. It's an on there. Now yeah. I come down there with the fence around it. I wasn't there since I did that in 2011. So it's like 11 years. That may be growing in again now. I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this one here, she asked me that too. But yeah, we had to lay down and crawl underneath the electric fence. And uh, just to get to this, because hmm. horses run around there, there was some stones laying down. We had to uh, kick the... Uh, the horse dung off just to uh, <laughs> to read them. But uh, Benjamin Knight, 1892, there's his will. And none of this stuff is work for me. I love doing it. And uh, these guys that know me down here at the society would tell you they do. Right? Myers Cemetery. You guys familiar with Country Club Road up there in Clark Summit? Yes. Okay, this one here. Uh, let's see, an old right here. That one there is taken care of. It's not far from the golf course, but uh, they have a fence around it and it is taken care of well. Uh, the cameras I have now, uh, the old cameras, this wouldn't be big, but it would take a, a few minutes to do. But the cameras I have now, I could do 100 stones, 200 stones at one stop. And uh, back then when I did this, I had an older camera, but it wasn't too bad. But there's only uh, one page. And this one right here is right here. There's the Morgan Highway. You turn Country Club Road and my, my GPS is off a little bit. It's right here, actually, there. But it, you, you can't miss it driving down that road. Uh, let's see. Uh, McDonald Cemetery. This one here is on Reese Street in Scranton. I looked and looked and looked for this. And I went up one day and I looked in the woods what looked like a big sand mound for a septic. And I do have three pages here. I'm going to show you that what this looked like. It looked like this with trees on it, a big septic. And I'm walking around, no stones. And there was a guy there across the street. And he said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm looking for a symptom. He said, you're standing on it. Okay. Uh, I went up and in, in his house and he got me a map. And there's a map there where it's, it's lined off. It was donated by the McDonald family as a cemetery way, way, way back. Wow. He has one stone and he took by his house. And let's see where, I, and I'm going to show you something that happened here too that people don't know about. And uh, let's see, where is it at here? You guys, I, oh, right here. Yeah, he had this lean up again, just Elisa. I mean, that's how it's made out of white marble, which was very easy to use, but they didn't know it wouldn't last too long at all. But uh, right here, let me show you this. Let's see if you guys, uh, O'Rourke, I think the name was, let's see. Ginny O'Rourke. Uh, Place of birth, county jail. She gave birth <laughs> in jail, 1892. Now, you probably heard a few years ago, there was uh, a lot of stuff going on about a girl giving birth in jail and all that. Well, it happened before. Here's uh, April 7, 1892. And uh, okay, we're still doing good there. I'm shading cream trick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to your question from the chat in just a minute. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any questions, please don't hesitate. Jump right in there. She's it, asking how you did the shading cream trick with the headstone. <laughs> okay. No, no, I, I don't. What I do is I carry a uh, regular rubbing paper. Uh, Pezzavento. I know him up there, John Pezzavento. And uh, I got some off of him. And that works good. But what works better is tinfoil. If you have a stone that's really faint, you get tin foil and get an old toothbrush, hold it around there and swirl the brush like that and go over it. The only thing is you need a camera to take a picture of it. Once you pick the tin foil up, it'll bend and you won't read it again. You even leave it on the stone and rub it like that. And I've taken pictures of several cemeteries here that uh, I did that too. And uh, you can't, you can hardly read. Now this here, since then, McDonald Cemetery, these here are the veterans that we know of. And I have the records that I put on there. And uh, here's Edward Smith. And it says McDonald Cemetery Private. It was in Scranton. And that was, uh, I'm not even sure what year. They inspected it in uh, 1936. But uh, this guy, the neighbor, takes care of it now. But now without controversy, I have uh, a film. It's not on here where Channel 28 was down there and the neighbors were yelling at him. And I happened to be driving by and I got, I stopped there. I'm on TV talking <laughs> with them too. It was interesting. But that's the McDonald Cemetery down in, in Scranton on Reese Street. And uh, let's see, where are we going? Go to St. Thomas first? Yeah, I can jump into St. Thomas if you want. Yeah, let's see. St. Thomas now. Fly in the time. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. 
St. Thomas Cemetery, 132 pages. <clears throat> this cemetery here, one of our members of the Archibald Stork side named Bill Burke helps me out a lot. He gets obits all the time on newspapers.com and scans them. And then I scan them, I put them on here. We have 250 obits from people that don't have stones in the cemetery. And they are buried there. And the records were burned in 1909 from the church. So they don't know at the church. You could ask them, they don't even know. So the best bet for this cemetery is our website here. And, but I don't know if, how many are on now from Archibald looking, but Jimmy Alco, he was the barber up there. They even <laughs> have a picture of him and years ago, taken, <laughs> there he is. I used to get my hair cut there in the same way in a, a horse chair. That's fine. So I put pic many pictures on there and, uh, but there's 132 pages and you just click on a page there. There, here's more uh, pictures there. Anytime I can find them. Uh, Anne wrote in the 1982, newer ones, older ones there, but uh, she has a stone, but a lot of them don't. That, uh, and we counted about 250 that don't have stones there. Same time, oh, this is another one, State Cemetery. Uh, you guys familiar with where the observatory is up there for Keystone College? Mm -hmm. Go down there, go past the observatory, go down to the bottom of the road. There's a cemetery on the left. I got out of the car and those people in the yard there. And I said, is there a cemetery around here somewhere? They said, yeah, but you probably can't get in there. Well, I got shot in a hunting accident. I limped. They could see me limp. You won't make it in there. I said, no, why not? It's overgrown. Come out of the house. So I went in their house mm -hmm. and they showed me pictures and they let me take pictures of the pictures, the stones, Cooper States died 1844. Then she finally said, yeah, you could go in. Well, I went in. And look at what I had to crawl through. I'm not on my hands and one knee crawling through this stuff. They get the pictures and uh, stones knocked over like that. That was also one that was not taken care of in, in decades. It's, there's looking at it from the road. It's in that thick bush. Nobody touches. Last name is States. And here are the coordinates of that. <clears throat> it's Hack Road. It's right on Hack Road. If you went up further here, you'd be at the observatory. But any any other questions on any? Uh... Quick up here. Question. I'm sorry. Somebody. No, go ahead. Um, in regard to the Washburn Street Cemetery, yeah. um, I I mean I've read the articles that Chris Kelly has put in about it, and I know that um, it they don't have any money because it was absconded. Do you know? Um, I know that the Shady Lane. Cemetery now has a nonprofit supporting it. And I was wondering if you knew of anybody who was trying to do something similar to that with the Washburn Street Cemetery? No, not offhand. No, I didn't do either of those yet because they're big. I need two cameras. They are that. big. <laughs> but uh, that Washburn Street, that the vandalism was unreal. Now, I went down yeah. there, uh, from that disaster down the line there. They, uh, uh, a lot of people buried in there. And uh, but the, the, yeah, they I have a lot of ancestors uh, there, a right. lot, that's yeah. A, and the, the Shady Lane one, too, that's bigger than I thought. I went in there, but there was a guy cutting the grass when I went in two years ago, and the, the weeds were almost as tall as I am. I mean, it there, was, it's being cared for now. They got, um, I can't think of her name, her first name's Carol, but I can't think of her last name. And she and another woman organized a nonprofit, and they're able to coordinate on a Facebook page. I think it's called Friends of Shady Lane or something like that. But I was just curious about Washburn Street because, you know, I think it's sad that it's got all that history to it. It does. There's an awful lot. Yeah, it was Avondale. That's the, that Avondale. Yeah, Avondale. Mm -hmm. wow, buried in there. And uh, that's, uh, I met two of the guys that used to belong to the camp that uh, where I belonged to the Civil War. I met them down there. And that, there's a lot of history in that, that cemetery. You were mentioning before, uh, Sarah, the Soblodnik plot, that's the yes. one right here. This oh, is a modern cemetery. Uh, the guy's father, his mother rather is there and his, uh, his son uh, right here. She was born in 1917, died in 2000. And I said, wait a minute, this is a modern cemetery. I said, how do you get one on your property? And uh, well, here, here's a picture. That's the, the boy who's buried there. That's his son. And, uh, and he told me the whole thing. But that's up there in uh, Scott Township. Uh, he's one of the supervisors. Here's the, uh, the coordinates on that. It's off of Hickory Ridge Road, a ways there, but I got to know him at one of the meetings up there. And uh, uh, let's see, St. John's uh, Cemetery. There's, that's one of the ones I found bones. I have 79 pages there, human bones. 
that one and the uh, Weatherby Cemetery. I found bones up in that one. I found thigh bones and I just let them alone. I just don't bother them there. But uh, here's 79 pages. There's a lot of, uh, and I think in this one here is that guy, uh, that ball player who was shot in a hunting accident, uh, Pete Fidati. And he, uh, he's very nice. I mean, he was 22 years old, same age I was when I got shot. But any other uh, questions? Uh, St. Michael's Russian Orthodox. I have a lot of pictures in that one there and five pages so far, Lackawanna County. I have a question. In Clark's Summit area, Clark's Green, Scott yeah. Township, I think it takes in that area. Uh, again, Scott Township, Clark Summit and Clark's Green. I remember once someone stopped me and asked me where Miller Cemetery is. Yeah. And I believe I found one on Abington Road, South Abington Road. However, on Fairview Road, there's a mill. How many Miller cemeteries are there in that area? I'm on the Miller one right now. If you can okay. see it right now, it's on, on Fairview Road. And I have six pages of stones there. I'm not sure how many other ones are. I do have, here's one Civil War veteran, uh, William Holgate. He's buried there. But yes, okay. that's the Miller uh, Cemetery. Uh, I'm not sure. There may be several others. But, yeah, I, I thought I came across, I'll have to now, it's on, I, Abington Road is the road I live on, and I thought I saw something with Miller Cemetery, and I thought possibly there, after telling the people, because they were out of town, they were looking for the M Miller Cemetery, then I realized I went by the one on Fairview Road, so I may have gave them the wrong direction or the correct one, but I have to see again if it's on Abington Road, a Miller, yes. another one. You know, Oscar Miller's Orchard Farm Market's right there. Yeah, that one I became familiar with, that, that one. Yeah. But um, again, on Abington Road is the one that I'll have to check again because I, I mean, know. I didn't dwell on it, you well, know. Uh, there is one up there near that. I think it's called the Hall Family Cemetery. And uh, let's see where Hall, that's on Layton Road. And okay, that's on the uh, okay uh, parallel yeah, you know, that, road to uh, Fairview. It, that's grown in. I mean, yeah. bad. There's the gate going into it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know who takes care of that, but there are uh, Civil War, at least one Civil War veteran in there, and a lot of stones you can't read anymore. Yeah. Okay, I think you confirm. I'll just have to double check to make sure, but if there is a Miller Cemetery on Abington Road. Another one, in addition to what the uh, one we know of on Fairview. Okay, you answered my question. Good. Thank you. Well, I don't know how much further you want to go. Yeah, well, I, I, if you want to do, do maybe one more, and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, be, 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 before you do that, and this is a really dumb question, but how do you find human bones in a cemetery if they're supposedly buried? Is, are they dug up by animals? Well, like uh, this one right here. They come out and find you, George. This West <laughs> Weatherby Cemetery is on Grzbowski Road in Scott Township. It's very old. The first burial is uh, eight, uh, 1814. And they didn't use vaults back then. All they did is put them in a box. And a lot of them, you see the indentations in the ground. there. Well, they worked their way up. And we found a bone up there. We found a thigh bone once. And we did, uh, with the Scott Historic Society, we did rebury that one. But then since then, I was up there again. And uh, uh, I found another bone. Somebody found, and they put it on top of the stone. <laughs> it looked like it was a leg bone or something. And it was on top. I, I didn't touch that. I just left that one there. Uh, but uh, that it's that old, and they didn't use vaults. That's how they, they worked their way up. But I was here several times. Patty Dennis takes care of this again. And she dug up more stones out of here, maybe 20 more stones I didn't have. They were all covered with vegetation. And uh, now they're uh, here. You can see I was here in the winter and in the summer. And uh, there's an overview after Patty took care. I mean, she really did a good job on it. So any more uh, questions? Uh, well, you know, there's one that I, I should show you guys first. Uh, let's see, Lackawanna County, because this one here, I'm, I'm sure you probably don't know about. Uh, oh, Oliphant Catholic Cemetery. You guys know where the Burke Bypass is in Oliphant? Right? I think I, think I do. The okay. Burke Bypass. Okay, I think I do. It was in the paper. Mike Grayson, he's a retired mailman. If you're driving on the Burke Bypass heading up towards Jessup, that big column bank that was on your right behind the post office, it was a cemetery. Okay. Under. And this guy remembers it. Under the column dump? Yes. Wow. 
my mom told me my grandmother used to go to her father's grave there. She'd walk from Lane Street. So he's buried there, Thomas Dacey. That's the only known picture I have of him, my great grandfather. And what they did is in the 30s or 40s, it was uh, sinking in. So they decided to uh, stop burying and they put everybody else up in the uh, St. Pat Cemetery. And if you had the money, they'd reinter your people, but we didn't have the money, our family, so they're still there. But these names, Willard Reap, he's buried there. There's uh, uh, John Revels. I, mean, I have several, and there's several Civil War vets and the article in the paper is right here, dredging up the, that's a picture of it right there. I'll put mine real quick, maybe on top of Long Lost Cemetery. That was in the paper in 2007. Oliphant Catholic Cemetery, and quite a few people buried there. Uh, but it's long buried over. And when Mike said they're coming down there, they're going to dig up that column. He said you might be able to see the iron fences that he remembers. Well, they didn't dig down that low. They just plowed her over and they put topsoil and they planted grass and that's it. But here you have a John Walsh. It's buried there, and uh, Oliphant Catholic Cemetery. That's where it is. This was, uh, I didn't even have a date on that one. I just found that somewhere in the paper. But uh, that's, any, any other questions? I do. I have one more question from Olivia, who is also in our office today. Oh, okay. She says, can anyone visit a private cemetery and what do you need to do so? You, you've mentioned knocking on doors and finding these things. How do you, how do you approach a cemetery on private land? I just knock on the door. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> I was just doing Lackawanna County now. There's one up in uh, Wayne County. And I knocked on the door and the, uh, the woman said, yeah, she said, see that field? You got to walk through that field. And it's about 300 yards back. Then there was another one up in, uh, wow, storm out there. It's for tornadoes. In Wayne County. And she took me in the house and she said, look out to the back door. There's a sliding door. See that copse of trees? There's a cemetery. There. She said, but when we bought it, they told us that we could do whatever we want. I said, okay, what does that mean? She said, well, we buried our dogs there. I said, I'm not interested in door stuff. <laughs> uh, for the people. So I went up there and I got all the people there. And, but yeah, they, they normally let you through. They, they let you on. And uh, I think by law, so far, they have to. Uh, and may, most of the ones, the small ones I have, they were on uh, private property. Uh, the other ones I got off the type 10 pen maps, they're just along the side of the road in all the counties there. But uh, yeah, about 61,000 tombstones, a lot of exercise I got doing it. <laughs> and I have a lot, a lot of fun doing it. Any other uh, questions? No, but I have a comment. Okay. I I think you did an excellent job and it was very fascinating, interesting. Um, I, I, it, you captured the whole thing and kept me interested from beginning to end. You were really good. So don't worry about uh, uh, comparing yourself to Sarah. You're equal. You did a very, very good job. Yeah, I'm not very a speaker as her, but it's historical dash data. When we bought the name, we couldn't get it without the dash. <laughs> we don't care it doesn't matter but historical dash data it's been online since probably the end of 09 and uh we had about almost 400 people contact us and uh, they found our ancestor on the site we had one girl from archibald she said i found stuff about my grandfather i didn't know about i said where are you from because they could be from anywhere in the world she said archibald i said well then you need to join our historical site she said we have one i said yeah we do <laughs> uh you mentioned some planned updates to the website. Do you have a, a date for that? We or? don't have a date yet, but my sons are writing the code and it'll be set for other people. It'll always be free, but you, you, have, you log in and you put, pick a username and if you, you upload things, they'll go into a cache. We'll look at it, see if it's legitimate. And if it is, we put it online with your name on it. And it's not going to be just cemeteries like uh, find a grave is limited to graves, obviously. Uh, we're going to have old town photos. In fact, if you went to our the homepage, uh, all these videos, that's my video channel. Uh, like I have Sterling, Forest City, German, Archibald, and all the way down the bottom. I even have the, a link to this uh, historic society and a, a library has a link to us too. But uh, you'll be like, here we have unknown photos there. Uh, I have one and videos. Uh, August, uh, uh, Nayag Park, unknown family, 1955. It was up three years. A guy called me uh, about two months ago and he said, I know who the people are on there. 1955, and he said, that's my wife's grandparents. He gave me a name and everything, so I'm gonna put that on a, a DVD for him and give it to him. But here's three years online, we didn't know who it was. A friend of mine bought it at a garage sale and uh, digitized it, and I put it online, put music behind it. I have copyright for your music, and uh, that's where it's at. So that's gonna be set up for people to do that way. They will put their own pictures on there, unknown pictures or known, whatever, and uh, cemeteries too, and everything else. 
Okay, again, thank you very much, Dale, for, for joining us and for sharing this information. Um, please share the website um, with other friends and family if you have others who are working on, on family genealogy. Um, a lot of this information is really only available um, on, this, on this website, or at least in, in such a, a concise format. Uh, so a great resource for family history and family genealogists. Um, as I said, this is our 50th episode of Lackawanna Pastimes, and we think we've, we've earned a break for ourselves. Uh, we will be taking the summer off. Uh, we have a, a busy calendar coming up. Um, we, we will be returning with another Lackawanna Pastimes episode probably in September of 2022. Um, in the meantime, all of our episodes of past, past programs are available on our YouTube channel. Uh, please take a look and see what you, what you may have missed in the past, uh, learning about the local history and the area surrounding the Lackawanna Valley. Uh, thank you again for, for joining us and Dale for, for sharing your, your information. Have a lovely day, everyone.